Hello world, hello world, how you guys doing? Listen, I am excited on today because I get to interview somebody special on her own podcast. Why? Because yes, I made her do this podcast because it is a need for the world. You guys need to hear this voice. Uh, the one, the only, said Teresa Wilson. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for, uh, I was about to say thank you for having me, but <laughs> thank you for uh, helping me in, in this launch. I'm so excited. It's so surreal for me, so I'm, I'm stoked. Absolutely. Well, listen, I want you guys to make sure you follow her. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, make sure you guys uh, subscribe to the podcast channel, right? We're on Apple Music. We're going to be on Spotify. Uh, so make sure that you guys uh, stay connected to San Teresa because she is going to be giving you guys with not just herself, but she's going to be bringing up some amazing speakers, too, that's going to help get you guys through some of these traumas that you guys may have been facing. So, San Teresa, I'm going to get into an interview Q&A with you. Sure. Um, so I just want you to give the people a piece of you. So the first question I have is, what's one thing you wish you had known when you began your career? One thing that I wish I had known is that um, just to do it, I think that a lot of times we hold ourselves back and we question and we hold on to a lot of what ifs. So I feel like when I started my career that if I would have just did it a long time ago, probably more people could have been helped. But um, I'm thankful that I have launched out and branched out and been able to help the people that I have. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, what is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? My biggest failure, um, I think it's a trickle effect, right? So my biggest failure is being in a rush in life um, in regards to just starting stuff, not completing it. You feel like it's going to take too long. And so what I've learned and what um, growing up, I used to hear an adult say that time is your best friend. And so I never really embraced that. And so for me, it was kind of like, you know, you start college, they say your graduation date three years away, you're like three years, and then you quit. Or, you know, it's so it, it, that was very repetitive for me. So I, I regret it. Um, but I it made me appreciate time now. So as I see the accomplishments happening, or when I hear that I want to do something, and that there's going to be um, a time constraint order, not a constraint, but it'll take a certain amount of time to do it. I'm still looking at the bigger picture instead of isolating myself. We're looking at the right now. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to elaborate a little bit when you said time is your best friend, because people need to understand that it can be your best friend if you treat it right. Yeah. But if you abuse it, it will go against you where you'll be like, oh, my God, I'm overwhelmed. You know, so you have to to manage your time wisely, which is one of the things that, you know, I'm. I had to, you know, I'm 36 years old. It took me until I was 30 to actually start moving into that direction where I have to start, you know, being more respectful of yeah. my time, right? So, you know, it, it's just one of those things that I'm, I'm, even now I'm still learning, right? That's the reason why I got two assistants because I'm still having a problem because I just have that yes mentality. Oh, I mm -hmm. want to help. I just want to help everybody. Oh, you need help? I'm, it's I'm over here, I'm over there. And a lot of my, my sometimes my assistants are like, Dr. Pitts, relax, take a breath. I know you want to do, you only got this many hours in a day though, right? You got 24, not 28. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah. You, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. So question three, what advice would you give someone so, wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? Oh, that's a good question. Um, actually, I was having a conversation with someone about that. And so if it's in regards to um, trauma recovery, let me say that um, because there's a, so many coaches out there. Everybody wants to be a coach. Everybody feels like because they gave great advice that now I'm a coach and it's so much. It's, it's a lot. And especially, you know, someone has been through something and they're like, oh, well, I want to do trauma recovery. And so even though I have, let me say this, number one, I have the credentials. Right. Um, but I have the, the lifestyle. I've endured something. And so a lot of times 
people want to do it, but I would say really be prayerful about it um, because it's not easy. It's very emotional. You have to learn how to work with your clients and leave it there, right? And for me, my outlet is prayer. So to work with my client and then to pray, um, you know, after I'm finished with the session and to leave it there. Because a lot of times, if you're not careful, you could carry that with you throughout the day. And a lot of that for me came from um, when I trained to be an advocate with um, our local rape crisis center. And so going to the hospitals and sitting with victims at the time and watching them go through and seeing their tears and holding their hand if they allow you to as they go through their exams and things like that. And then having to leave them and never see them again. And so you have to learn how to um, process you know, in your own way, have your own uh, way to digress, have a coach, have a mentor, have someone else that you can, you know, speak to because you can't do it by yourself. It's a it's a team effort. And so if someone is looking to um, pertain, uh, obtain and be a trauma recovery coach, I would really say really be um, prayerful about it, really be thoughtful about it, really consider if that's something because it's again, it's, it's an emotional, it's an emotional thing. It's not just um, entering in someone's life, they've already dealt with trauma. So they don't need you to come and not be prepared to deal with whatever they have to tell you. And you have to be non-biased and you have to be non-judgmental because everybody's walk is different. And so you can't come with your own opinions. You can't come with dictatorship. You have to come with, you know, a, a complete understanding, empathizing. You know, I have a client where I know some days I have to let them have a vent day. That's just how they are. They need to vent. They need to get it out. And then afterwards, we're like, okay, so what are we going to do about it? Or, okay, so what are we going to do to move forward? So it's a process. It's not like just regular coaching a business. You're actually dealing with people and their emotions and a sense of trust has to be built. Yeah, absolutely. And you brought up a very common point because people don't understand that um, when you're dealing with clients, you're taking on their problems. Mm -hmm. and, and us as coaches, we have to we have to get that outlet out somewhere. It has to go somewhere. So I always recommend that if you have if you are a coach, you should have a coach. Yeah. Because when you when you you have to be able to let it out somewhere because of everything that you're go, you're dealing with. And if, if people don't understand that as coaches, you know, we take the time, we're taking notes, we're we're, we're finding resources to help these individuals out, but that can be, like you said, exhausting, right? So it's, it's very important that when you, if you want to step into this lane, you got to know what you signed up for. You can't come into this thing and be like, oh man, you know, I don't want to do this again. It don't work like that because you got people who depend on you and who need you, right? Mm -hmm. So um, next and question. Can, can I just interject real quick? Yeah. And so, and the only other thing I want to say is in speaking to me, right? Um, and just to be a little transparent, you know, last year when I went through, you know, uh, losing my dad and, um, you know, dealing with a pregnancy that I wound up losing. And so I was I was trying to do it myself. I'm a coach. Right. Because that's what coaches supposedly do. Or you put yourself in a category to where, OK, this is my business coach and that has nothing to do with my business. But again, everything is a trickle effect and it's tied together. And so I want to want to worldwide say I appreciate you. And I appreciate you because when I was in the hospital because the peak of COVID and nobody could be in there with me and I was dealing with complications with the pregnancy, you was texting me scriptures. You was texting me. You was like, ma'am, how come you ain't tell me? But it never really dawned on me. And so that's the important of it because when I felt like um, things was just overwhelming, it was just like I had someone to talk to and you were there for me and I appreciate that. And so what that taught me and what I say to people all the time, it's okay to say that you're not okay, no matter what title you hold, no matter what position you're in, because if you're not okay, you can't help other people to be okay. And so I found myself in that position it was a great lesson to learn. And so, you know, people go, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, because I had to, that was my my lesson, my process, I had to learn. And I always, I'm ever so forever grateful to you for that because it was no longer a, you're my client, you pay for this amount of time and that's it. And so I 
carry that into my business as well because my love for people I w- I'm like that anyway and so it's no it's not just about the business it's really bona fide being concerned about your clients and about their lives and that's why it's very important to make sure whoever you pick as a coach to walk alongside of you that you guys mesh and that y'all blend because I've called you several times and told you I wanted to quit and you will never let me quit. Now, I, I know, you know, but you've learned me to know I'll be in my emotions and be like, hey, I don't want to, especially when you try to push me out there and I'm like, okay. But, you know, and so we get over that hurdle. We've got gotten over that. So it's always, I always, always, always encourage people like you want a coach, get a coach, get a mentor, get someone um, number one, who you can afford because you don't want gaps in your in your coaching. And then number two, be committed to and be 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 with someone who you could be 100 percent transparent with, who you could trust, because the only way that you can really get the whole full fulfillment of coaching. So what I want to say is, is that, you know, at the end of the day, make sure that you get a coach who you can afford. Um, and also someone who you could be your authentic self with, because that's the only way that you'll be able to get the fulfillment, the fullness of, you know, working with a coach. Absolutely. So say Teresa, tell us next question. What are the best resources that have helped you along the way? Um, for So for me, it would definitely be um, the the church and, and really just the Bible and prayer. Um, Again, everyone is different. You can't handle everyone in a, in a different way. So, and then also my school and, and just interacting with people. Um, again, you know, you have to be able to be very diverse when working um, in trauma recovery or just even being a coach in general or just really just dealing with people. If you're a people person or you want to work in any type of industry with people, um, be around people right? And learn how to mix and mingle and intermingle and don't be scared. I know it's COVID out there. There's a lot of virtual events going on. It's Clubhouse um, that's out there now. And just kind of learn to, to intermingle with people. Understand that sometimes things that you say in other cultures is, is not um, accepted or they find it to be um, a form of disrespect. So it's just really learning cultures and being around people and um, of course church to build my faith up and my strength up and, and really just um, my, my team and my, my support team, my coach and, and, you know, my friends, my close friends. Um, And so that's kind of where I'm at. Absolutely. And, you know, that's another thing too, that um, individuals who want to step into this arena need to understand that. And even whether you are a coach or a client, you have to have some kind of resources. Again, as a coach, you got to have the resources to provide to the client. But then as a client, you have the re- you have to have the resources to even outlet, right? Because, you know, you will have a coach, but then you have to have other people that play a major role in your life as well to add to what your coach is doing or to give your coach that much more credibility because it helps the coach out, right? Yeah. So yeah. That, that's a um, great, great answer. Uh, next question. Who are the three people who have been the most influential to you? Ooh. That's a good three. <laughs> um, let me say, uh, and number one, I would say my mother. Um, and, and it's through her death that I learned more about her. And so I feel like um, the things that she was going through, you know, she grew up, my grandmother had 18 children. And she was one of the oldest and being in that position of to help raise her siblings. Cause you know, back then when you have siblings, you take care of them. Right. And so, and then to also deal with her life and my mother dealt in a domestic violence uh, relationship with my oldest brother's um, father. And um, you know, where he had stabbed her in the head and left her on the train tracks. And, you know, so the story goes that I've heard, I wasn't born at that time. And so it gave me a greater appreciation to see her not only survive her trauma, but also in the long run to to get a job. And I always say like some people work in careers where they work it because they're good at it. And some people are born into those careers. And she was a born nurturer. She became a nurse. Um, She started from the bottom, worked up to the top. You know, she married my dad. 
and you know she had you know the rest of her children and she instilled into us number one faith and, you know, instilled in the, to us, you know, to trust the Lord, but just to watch how she came out of her trauma and assured and made sure that her children seen better and we experienced better. And we understood that we don't have to accept just mediocre, you know, things just because of what society says. And so I appreciate her for that. And I appreciate her strength for that. Um, and, you know, I've had times where, you know, we we bumped heads a lot and she was very hard on me, but I was able to have a conversation with her before she died. But if I could talk to her now, I would tell her that my appreciation level for her has has had tremendously increased, even than when she was given three years uh, to live. She took that three years to a bring her family back together. And then to to do whatever needed to be done in regards to that. And then two, she was still, you know, doing, taking care, doing things with seniors and, you know, helping people out even in the midst of all of that. So she had a servant's heart. And so I, she's very influential to me, you know, just to watch that, you know, uh, that part and to learn from her and to love of her through that. Um, the second person that's very influential to me, um, I would say is my godfather. Um, I would say that he's a very humble person. I very rarely, I, I've never heard him raise his voice before, honestly speaking. Um, he's very humble. He's a pastor now. And just and I and I tell him all the time, embracing um, being a godparent at the time and not embracing me as um, his goddaughter, but as his daughter. And so just watching him be a hard worker, watching him be consistent, watching him in worship, constantly worshiping. And so that played a big part in regards to my walk with the Lord and my worship with the Lord, because that's what I do. I, I can find a song. You can say a word and I can find a song to match that word all the time. And it's just the authenticness of worship he taught me. Um, and you, you are my third person. I watch you. Um, I met you. Uh, through uh, Kayla was talking about you and I was searching for a coach and um, we spoke and we spoke, I think twice. And then afterwards, and then I watched you because that's what people do. You watch people, you know, you do your, not, not necessarily research, but you watch and you have so much going on. I couldn't watch the website, you know what I mean? So, but you watch and you know, the Bible tells us that we know people by their fruits and the fruits that they display. And you spoke things into my life that I did not see at the time, right? I'm like, oh, he crazy. Like, what are you talking about? But I say that because, and I always tell you, like, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. Now I'm older than you. But I say that because to be consistent, there are consistency over these years that I've, well, year and some change that I've known you, the consistency, the follow-up, the checking in, the, you know, and so, and, and even out of all your chaos in that you do everything, all the greatness that you're doing, you still could say, I haven't talked to you. And so I'm like, for me, that heart that you carry for people, even though, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you still show the heart and the love for people. So yes, thank you. And I'm not just saying that because you want to show and I'm talking to you I say all the time to people all the time. And it's funny because people go, you're a coach and you refer people to your coach. And I'm like, I do, because some people I know that because I love people so much, I understand that sometimes you have to pass them off to someone who you know can handle them in the right way. And for me, that's a bigger thing to, than to try to handle someone and mishandle them. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I think that that's a very uh, a touching point with a lot of coaches out here in the world today. What I want to be able to do with the, the platform of coaching, mentoring is I, I'm developing speakers and coaches and, and mentors because I have mentees that I have to pass off to somebody else because they they just have a level of need that I just can't service. Right. And what that does for you is it makes you that much more of a creditable coach because they're like, OK, wait a minute. You're not after no money for me like you really want to help me. So because you really want to help me, I got to stay connected to you just by just because. And that's fine, because when you when you recover from what you're going through, then you can always come back over here 
to where now you're in my lane of where I can help you accelerate at. Yeah. Right. So that that's definitely a, a, I'm so glad that you touched on that. So talk to us a little bit about releasing my secrets. So releasing. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, so we have the book, the podcast, the blog, <laughs> and the list goes on and on. So releasing my secret. Um, I, I penned my book. Um, which is a, a 30 day devotional that supports your healing process, releasing my secret is the title. And so the reason why I, God gave it to me is because releasing my secret. So secret is something that we bury within ourselves. We don't disclose it. We don't talk about it. And, and what a lot of people, what we do is we'll go through something and culture teaches us Oh, just don't worry about it. Put it down, you know, bury it, you know, just keep moving forward. You got to go, you got to go, you got to go. And so what happens is you bury that emotion, you bury that feeling. And then all of a sudden it's like, you start seeing the trickle effect of that. You start seeing, I can't move on in my business. I can't progress in this area. I can't do this. I can't do that. And you get to that point because you have a secret. What is that secret? Is it hidden anger? Is it you, you secretly really just don't like yourself. You know, you have self-hate. You know, you, you, you're you secretly dealing with a hurt or a, something that really traumatized you. And so releasing my secret is releasing the things that was meant to keep you bound, that you suppressed for so long that's keeping you from excelling in life to where you really could be further along as, as opposed to where you're at. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. Now, now I know you said it's the books, a podcast, it's a blog. So just kind of tell everybody, how do they get access to the book, to the blog and to the podcast? Yes. So um, in regards to releasing my secret, I do have a website, which is releasingmysecret.com. Um, you can definitely get there. There's links there that will take you um, this access to the book. Uh, it'll give you access to the podcast and the videos on the podcast. Um, um, and also with the blog, the blog it will be listed there as well. And so even if you go to uh, SantresaW.com, which is my main website, there's a link there that'll bring you straight over to releasingmysecret.com. I wanted everything in one location so that you didn't have to search all over to look to find out about releasing my secret. And again, you know, with releasing my secret, it's not just about me, right? I, we working on the anthology um, is pretty much almost finished. I had some great writers to write in regards to being a teen mom. I experienced that. And so I'm not the only one with stories to tell. And that's kind of another reason why we have this, this podcast. Absolutely. So, you know, you kind of just answered my last question, why the podcast? So I just want you to just elaborate on that a little bit, though. Um, you know, I know one was because I pushed you, right? We got that out of the way. But just explain to, to the listeners why the for the launch of this podcast, I'm excited because I know that your one, your voice needs to be heard, but two, your story needs to be told. So just elaborate a little bit to the, to the listeners as to the reason why this podcast is an important piece to the brand. Yes. So, um, yes, you pushed me. I knew it was coming. I, I actually, the flyer was done probably about a year ago. I think we talked about that. And, you know, always, I believe in, in God's timing, everything would come forward. And a lot of times I'm a very proactive person. I just, ideas come to me and I start acting on it. Um, now is the time because, I've been on multiple platforms. I've been interviewed by many people. And so during those interviews, you know, great interviews, great hosts, a lot of times, sometimes you run up against, and you may too, where they're like, okay, you can talk about this. You can't talk about that. You can talk about your faith. You can't talk about your faith. You can say higher power. You can't say Jesus. You can't. And so it puts you in a, in a position of, I can't always be my authentic self. And so the delivery of my message, I would have to kind of tweak it and still pray that someone could get the delivery of the message, right? And so I wanted to create a safe platform where I could bring speakers on where you're, no, you're not talking about your craft. 
we all talk about goal setting. We all talk about, you know, how to make your business do this and do that. But I wanted a platform where uh, someone could come on and they can tell their story, the back end of the story, right? The how they got to where they're at, because a lot of times people see the success, but they don't understand the struggle. And so the, the subtitle, Amplifying Your Voice One Story at a Time, I believe that as people come on this safe platform, and they're able to be their authentic self, their voice is going to amplify even more because they're going to be able to release and really to tell who they are and why they do what they actually do. And so that's that's the key. The key is, is that, you know, the generations that are coming up now, they're like, we want the truth. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't tell me something different. And so it's so many people who have stories out there, stories of survival. It is not just dealing with domestic violence, but there are people who could say, listen, I'm going through this. And I always say this, we identify as survivors of trauma. We identify as survivors of situations, but very few people can say, I identify as a survivor of the process to heal, the process to become successful. Some people stop in the middle of that process because they don't know who to talk to, who can relate to me, who's relatable, who's been there, who's going through that. And this is what this platform, what this podcast will offer them um, directly in regards to that. So will you see people who will say, Jesus, yes. Will you say see people who come from a different religious background? Yes. Why? Because it's a safe place for people to be able to express themselves and to really let you know, like, I'm human. And so, and this is what I've gone through because as a human, we all bleed the same. We all, you know, go through things the same, but we process things sometimes different. But this is just to give you an insight. And I always, as I've been, you know, I'm speaking to some people in regards to possibly being a guest on a show. You know, my main thing is, is I'm, we're not aiming to leave you where you're at. That by the time you finish the podcast, you will have a call to action, whether it's some tips, whether it's their contact information, whatever it is, we're going to leave our listeners and our watchers, our viewers with something to take home that we're not just going to leave you with an open wound because now you're thinking about your trauma. We're actually going to give you some resolve to some actions that you can do to help you move forward from where you're at. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Well, Santresa, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come on to your platform and question you about this amazing launch um, and with, you know, releasing my secrets podcast. I'm excited to listen to mm. all of the speakers. Again, guys, make sure that you support by following, subscribing. Um, St. Teresa is going to be on all platforms, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, of course. You guys name it. Um, she's going to be there. Make sure you follow all of the podcast channels. Um, you know, uh, like I say, Spotify, uh, I Heart Music. So everything that you guys can think of where podcast lays at St. Teresa's uh, releasing my secrets podcast will be there. Centrisa, is there anything that you want to leave the audience before we tune out? I just want to say yes, releasing my secret is key, and that is this is my baby. Um, I am the CEO of Inspired by You. So in my mind, I always say that we are, you know, here to show you that you can change and as you change, that you're going to inspire someone else to change because they are inspired by you. Absolutely. Well, listen, you guys, that is it for our session on today. We thank you guys tremendously for tuning in with us here live uh, on the podcast. Make sure that you guys listen to uh, the channel as well, too. Uh, St. Teresa, thank you again for having thank me you. as your first guest. I appreciate the kickoff. Listen, I'm excited. And listen, this the podcast takes place, you guys. we got to put this out there. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? Every Wednesday... 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you guys will be hearing this amazing voice, St. Teresa, along with some amazing speaker. Yes. Other than that, I love to leave you guys with my quote, coming together is the beginning, sticking together is progress, but working together is success. Bye for now. Bye.